Hi everyone, uh, my name is Charles and welcome back to part 3 of the OpenSCAD video series. In this video we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about the basics um, of how to modify a cube and uh, adjust the parameters of your cube. Uh, we're going to look at the documentation on the internet so that if I'm not entirely clear in what I'm saying that you have another reference that you can go to to uh, see how it is and other things that you can do that I might not talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about vectors and the representation of numbers uh, and how to use numbers in OpenSCAD. We're going to talk about the difference between rendering and previewing uh, just on a very shallow level, just basically what they mean in terms of your 3D object uh, and comments, basically how to get uh, the editor and compiler to ignore a line of code. Okay, so let's get started. So basically what we're going to first do, we're going to open up your internet browser and we're going to search for open as CAD documentation. And we want to look at the wiki book. Uh, that'll take us more or less to where we need to go. And scroll down to the OpenSCAD language reference and we're going to look at cube just to get an idea. So this might not make sense uh, at first but don't worry I'm going to explain it. So he here's the reference and now we're going to go back to our, uh, our editor and implement a few of the things here. Okay so the first thing that we see is we can declare a size. So right now the cube has a default size. Uh, I think it's one. So basically what we do is we type in size equals and if we put one it should stay the same. Now it's important to remember that the cube has a very specific syntax. Uh, it's a cube, then a set of parentheses, then a semicolon, and everything we want to change or modify goes inside the parentheses. So the size equals 1, the cube didn't change, but now if we make the size of the cube equal to 2 and we press F5 again, its side lengths are two times those size. So we've essentially made a bigger cube. This controls the size of the cube, and for general reference, most of the units... Uh, for everything I've done, the units are in millimeters. They correspond to millimeters. So this is a 2 millimeter by 2 millimeter by 2 millimeter cube. So uh, let's say we wanted a meter size cube. Well, there are 100 centimeters in a meter, and there are 10 millimeters in a centimeter. So that's 100 times 10, so 1,000. So if we want uh, a meter long cube, we say it's 1,000 millimeters. And then we press F5, and then we end up with something huge. And we just scroll out and look at it. And that's our that's our cube. Now, uh, for most purposes, especially if you're 3D printing, you're probably going to want something smaller to fit in the size of your print bed. So maybe 10 a centimeter is manageable. Uh, so we go back down, and there's our cube. So another thing you may have noticed in the documentation is the center. So right now... Uh, it's what call, it's what's called the center being false, which basically means that uh, a vertex of the cube is on the origin. And if we want to change that, we type center equals um, true. And this will take the center of the cube. If you were to draw an X on all points and where all those lines intersect, uh, that would be the center of the cube. So you find the center of the cube and we put that on the origin. So press F5 to see that. And so now we can see we have the center of the cube on the origin. Um, and if we want to how it was before, it's the default, but if we want to be explicit about it, we just say it's false. And that is what we have before. So, since there's no uh, rectangular prism function in OpenSCAD, it's just cube, there has to be a way to determine if you want different side lengths, because otherwise it would be very confusing uh, and very difficult. Maybe you'd have to make 
a cube out of a bunch of other cubes, smaller cubes, but that would be painful and slow. So there's a much easier way to do it. We, uh, we just define a vector. I'm going to move the center back to true. It takes the center of the cube and puts it on the origin. I'm going to move that back. And so now we can define a vector and we do that with square braces. Um, and so in the documentation, it says X, Y, Z. And so what this means is that the first number we put in is going to uh, determine how large the cube is in the X direction. So if we put 10 in for X, that means that the cube is going to be 10 units long in the X direction. So that's the same for the Y and Z directions. If we uh, put 20 in for Y, it's going to give us 20 in the Y direction. And if we put 50 in for Z, it's going to be 50 units long uh, in the Z direction. So um, we're going to see what this gives us. We press F5. And as you can see, it's given us something that's uh, shorter in the X direction. As you can see from this axis, uh, it's 10 units long in the X direction, 20 units long in the Y direction, and 50 units long in the Z direction. So now we're going to talk about the difference between rendering and previewing. So what we've been doing so far is previewing. By pressing F5, you preview um, your shape. And that that's nice and all, but you can't get the files that you need from this shape most of the time, depending on what kind of file you need. If you want a 3D file, you need to render it. So to render it, you don't press S5, you press F6. And usually that takes longer, but this is a small, simple object, so it takes a very short amount of time. Um, so instead of previewing, which is F5, you press F6 to render. And what this will enable you to do is go to File and Export. If STL is the standard for 3D printing. Uh, it's a stereolithography file. So if you need to 3D print, you're going to need to press F6 and actually render your object, depending on what it is. So that's that's it mostly. The difference between F5 and F6, it's a very simple understanding. But basically, if you need a 3D object to 3D print or move around to something else, F6 is what you're going to want to do. Um, so next, let's say we want to get rid of our first cube and make another cube because this one's not useful, but maybe want we want to see it in our code or we want a note to ourselves. So what we just did is we put two backslashes, forward slashes. I don't know which slash is which, but two of these slashes. And that essentially tells the compiler the thing that interprets your code uh, to ignore this line. So this line is now ignored. And if we press F5 or F6, it's just going to completely ignore it and nothing's going to show up. And voila, nothing's there. But if we go on to a new line, we can still type cube. And it's there. Uh, but we probably don't want this cube. So we comment that out. Go back. And just another thing to note is that you don't need this size equals. You can just uh, put your vector and it will be interpreted the same uh, in OpenSCAD. So that's essentially it for part three. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.